This videotape is part of the Video Oral History Project of the Colony Public Library of the City of the Colony, Texas. This interview is with Ms. Mary, Mrs. Mary Hunt of 4820 Jennings Circle. Mary is a housewife in the City of the Colony. This interview is taking place at Mrs. Hunt's home on Monday, April 29th, 1985 at 10.30 a.m. My name is Norman Adeller. I am an interviewer for the Colony Public Library Video Oral History Project. Will you please state your name and tell us something about your background, such as where and when you were born, where you grew up, and places that you have lived. My name is Mary Evelyn Weaver Hunt, and that is spelled H-U-N-D-T. I was born and raised in Borger, Texas, in the Panhandle of Texas. I attended elementary school there and junior high school and high school and two years of college at the junior college, Frank Phillips Junior College, and then transferred to the University of Dallas here in Irving, Texas, and completed my education with uh, receiving a BA degree in secondary education in 1961 with majors in biology and history and minors in music theology, art, and other subjects. I taught school and my first teaching position was in 7th and 8th grade science in Irving, Texas. And I loved this area so much that I did not go back to Borger to live but remained in this area. I taught school for eight years, both in public school and in Catholic school. And then I met my husband, David, uh, through a Catholic bowling league, uh, married. And when I found out I was pregnant, I chose to become a mother and homemaker and uh, chose a new career of homemaking and stopped teaching at that time. And I have been a homemaker for the last 14 years. Well, that's uh, quite a background you have. Uh, You've given me all the information on the your education. Uh, do you have any children? I have, have three children. Names? Elaine is 14 and in the eighth grade, grade at Griffin Middle School. Karen is 11 and in fifth grade at Kamey Elementary School. And Michael is nine and in third grade at Kamey Elementary School. Good. Uh, do you have any occupation, or are you a housewife uh, content to stay at home? I consider a homemaker an occupation. That is true. And, and I have not discontinued my teaching in that I am continually asked to uh, go out and teach uh, up at the junior high school of Griffin, uh, geology, rock hounding and the geology courses at the junior high school and at the at Kamey. I'm invited to teach um, as a guest lecturer in this area. Uh, I'm invited to teach geology to the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts in order for them to earn their badges in geology. I have, I have taught courses for the parks, uh, the Colony Parks and Recreation Department during the summer. Um, and I continually teach my children uh, science uh, and all parts of their education and that's related to their school as they have been in school throughout their years in school. Well, you certainly carried on your uh, profession of a teacher. In you addition to this, well, in addition to this, I've also uh, went back uh, to theology school, the 
John Paul Institute in Dallas and also the Institute in Fort Worth Diocese and received my, uh, for to study theology, more theology for two years and received my certification as a director of religious education and as a elementary, junior high, high school religious education teacher. And I have taught religious education in my church at St. Philip's for the for five years and then uh, out here in the colony also. Good. Uh, tell me, what prompted you to uh, move to the colony? We had two children, Karen and Michael, the Car Elaine and Karen. And uh, then Michael came along and we were living in Irving in a very small house and needed more room. At the same time that we began looking for a larger house, the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport opened up and the property value in Irving tripled. So we thought, well, we'd move out of Irving and we began to look at the many suburbs uh, around Dallas. But we found that the only area that would allow us with the one income of my husband, since I was not teaching or working outside of the home, uh, was here in the colony for this size house, a four bedroom home that we could afford, was here in the colony. And we moved here strictly because of the affordability of the home, but not for the location. And what year was that? Uh, that was August uh, 21st. Nineteen seventy seven. Nineteen seventy seven. Tell me, how did you become involved in community affairs in the colony? Well, when I got our when we received our first telephone bill, uh, it was over a hundred dollars. And I called information services to find out why all these where it said long distance charges were on the bill. At the time, I did remember asking the representative from Fox and Jacobs who sold us the home, uh, what type of telephone service did they have? Because we had General in Irving, which was not quite the best. Uh, we had many problems, but it was reasonable. It was a flat rate to call any place you wanted to in the Metroplex. So uh, I didn't understand why when I was calling any place in the Metroplex that I was being charged long distance rates and this uh, sales representative never mentioned that the telephone calls outside of the colony would be long distance. So I was completely astounded at my telephone bill and thought surely there had to be a mistake and when I called the representative at Bell Telephone she said no mistake had been made. That, in it, that I would, we were under the Frisco Exchange, which allowed us to call any place in the colony, Little Elm, Eastville, Wynwood Village, Estates, uh, Frisco, McKinney, at a flat rate, but anything outside of that area would, was considered a long distance call. So that's why you became And active. I became angry uh -huh. and began to write the uh, federal government. I wrote the President of the United States, the uh, federal uh, telephone company, and and that they referred me back and said this was a state problem and that the state had just opened up a public utility commission that year. Before that time there was no such commission. Bell Telephone dealt directly with the consumer in these problems, but now we had a state agency and they directed me back to the state and to the state governor to solve this problem. I see. Uh, what, what actions did you take to get other citizens to be concerned and try to do something to help you solve this problem? Well, first of all, I, I went back to see if this, you know, I couldn't understand. I asked questions in the neighborhood and uh, then went around to, went to the city council and called and asked if they were aware of this and had other citizens called complaining about this and they said yes. They informed me about the background of the history of the uh, what had been done already. 
Fox and Jacobs anticipated that there would be a problem with Southwestern Bell, and Mr. Ron Walden, in September of 1973, uh, contacted Southwestern Bell to provide a two-way extended area service for the colony, but Bell Telephone denied the request, and that, again, was before the Public Utility Commission was born. In January 1974, uh, Fox and Jacobs incorporate, decided it would incorporate its own telephone company uh, called the Lone Star Telephone Company Incorporated to provide that service to the residents. And Bell Telephone informed Fox and Jacobs that they were not in the telephone business and therefore could not do that, could not open up their own telephone business. Uh, Fox and Jacobs then in February of 1974 contacted General Telephone and asked General Telephone would they be interested since they serviced Louisville and we were so close, seven miles from, from Louisville, could they just string the lines out here and especially since right across the street from 121 is General Telephone going into North Carrollton, it would be very easy to come across 121, provide us with telephone service. They, they informed Fox and Jacobs that they would be glad to do that, but that Bell Telephone absolutely refused to uh, let go of their right-of-ways, their public utility right-of-ways that had been given to them by the state. So Fox and Jacobs then uh, went before the Public Utility Commission, which was formed then in May of 1974, and showed that there was a community of interest in the Dallas metro area and uh, statistics, uh, a telephone committee was formed under the leadership of Linda Pierce under the Homeowners uh, Association. Association. And they passed around thousands of petitions and they went to Austin to the Public Utility Commission showing that there was indeed an interest in the Dallas metro area for a flat rate base extended area, two-way extended area service in the colony. Uh, Bell denied their request in May of 1974. And uh, they also denied, uh, looked into the Lone Star Telephone Corporation company by Fox and Jacobs and informed uh, Fox and Jacobs that they could not do that and we not denied that request also. Is this a PUC that uh, the Public denied? Utility Commission yes. now also denied that request. So uh, having looked at all that had been done before and up to a certain point I wrote them to the Public Utility Commission asking what needed to be done that and they sent me a letter back uh, itemizing the things that needed to be done and saying that item one had already been accomplished, which was to show a community of interest by a majority of the people in the colony. And item two, the survey had been done. And item three was to provide a poll then, which would be sent from the Public Utility Commission. So we were waiting for this poll to take place in which every citizen of the colony who subscribed to Bell Telephone Service would be polled uh, to indicate to the PUC whether they wanted this service or not. And if 50% uh, or more indicated that they did, we would be given this service. I have the letters here that indicate that. The poll was given, more than 50% did indicate they wanted it, and then they said we had to have a meeting. With the PUC? The Public Utility Commission said, well, now that the poll is done, uh, we need to have a commission meeting with General Telephone, Bell Telephone, and all of the surrounding communities that would be involved. Did you attend any of these? Uh, yes, I was requested meetings? to go down because I had formed the Colony Telephone Committee and I was passing out petitions like this. Talk more, pay less, mental service, vote yes. And on the back, asking people, and we sent them, my husband ran these off, and I know for a fact that I had, I sent, I personally sent a thousand of these down a month for a year. And when I got down there, they could not find them. Uh, can you 
briefly tell me what happened at these meetings. Did they hear the uh, colony leaders? The, uh, the ones that went down for this meeting uh, was myself representing the, uh, at this particular meeting, uh, after the poll. This was a hearing that was held in Austin, Texas. Uh, in April of 1979, uh, Sandra, uh, I went as chair, first chairwoman of the Colony Telephone Committee for Metro Service. Mrs. Sandra Shera, who was mayor pro tem of the Colony, oh. uh, colony. the Colony, the uh, City Council, <laughs> I'm sorry, the Colony City Council okay. attended. Uh, Mr. Aunt Ron Underwood, principal of Hamey Elementary School, attended. Police Chief John Stein Keck of the Police Department attended. Richard Turner, a real estate broker in the colony, attended. Scott North, a resident and businessman, attended. Ann Baxter, a colony resident, attended. Mrs. Martha Kimberling, a colony resident, but also the, Lewis, the colony uh, Louisville newspaper editor, attended. Mr. Tom Hart, the colony city manager, attended. Jean Pollard, a councilman on the city council, attended. Mr. Ron, Walder, Ron Walden, Fox and Jacobs representative for marketing, attended. And the attorneys for Fox and Jacobs, Mr. John A. Martin, attended. And the attorney for the colony city council, Mr. Robert L. Dillard, attended to speak on behalf of the colony. So they Speaking are the against us. Well, go ahead. Okay, all of these testified that we need to needed two-way extended area service at a flat rate cost for the colony. The 23 metro cities were also represented who were against us, and of these was the attorney for Plano, Louisville, Irving, Dallas. Carrollton, Wiley, Grand Prairie, Cedar Hill, DeSoto, Garland, the attorney for General Telephone Company and the attorney for Southwestern Bell Telephone Company. Representing the Public Utility Commission was the legal attorney examiner, Mr. Alan H. King, who testified in favor of the colony, but only on an optional basis. The hearing examiner was Alan Holloman, who later uh, submitted, uh, studied all of the information that was provided and, and passed down uh, his decision and recommended his recommendation as that came from the three commissioners of the PUC, and this was to implement one way extended community calling on a optional basis. Well, uh, Mary, what do you think uh, will happen in the future? Uh, what would be the ideal situation to the problem? Do you have any? I have mixed emotions about this. We pay our water bill and our electric bill according to how much we use. Perhaps the times has come. Perhaps Bell Telephone, General Telephone, and other telephone committees are right in saying that we should pay for what we use. At the same time, <laughs> I would like, I use my telephone an awful lot. And I would like to have go back to the old way in which it was a flat rate and you could talk for hours and hours as long as you wanted to, to as far as you wanted to in the metro area. So are you referring to a optional rather than a stated contract of time? Possibly an optional uh, situation would is the answer, but I don't believe that this will ever take place. Bell Telephone will make the flat rate, and this was brought out at the commission that year. 
They, would, they intend to continue to up the flat rate until it is so unreasonable that the long distance rate looks I can't think of the word, uh, attractive to the residents and they will opt to use the long distance rate or the toll rate as they call it, as they would like to use the term. They don't like the, exactly the toll. They don't exactly like the word long distance rate. They like to use the word toll rate, which means to them you pay it and you pay for what you use. Well, isn't it true that uh, the Southwest and Bell is intending to reduce the toll charges in the near future. This is what I have read in the Dallas Morning News, that they keep going back to the Public Utility Commission and saying we need more money to increase the flat rate service and we would like to reduce, and if we could do that, then we could reduce the long distance rate or the toll rate. Are you getting uh, sufficient support from the uh, local government? That is the city council and the mayor at the present time. I am no longer involved in this issue when the, or when the, when the uh, Public Utility Commission handed down their decision here, which tells us one, two, three, four, five, why we could not have extended area two-way extended area service, uh, and that this would be put on a one-year that they were going to that they would give us extended community calling service. It was to be implemented in June 1980. It was to be an experiment to be monitored by Bell Telephone for one year. And at the end of that year, in June of 1981, to uh, reopen the colony case and review the statistics at that time to see if this experiment worked or did not work and go from there. Uh, since this was the decision, there was nothing more for me to do. And uh, at the, at the end of that year, in June of 1981, I did call the city council, uh, talk to the city uh, Well, do you feel this is your most significant uh, contribution to the colony to date? Is that your participation in this telephone uh, situation? I consider everything I do significant. <laughs> Are there any other comments you want to make at this time? Yes. I would like to say that uh, I was trying to say that I talked I talk to the uh, city, what is Janice Carroll's title? She is the city manager. Okay, I talked to the city manager at that time in uh, June of, of 1981 to see if the city was going to reopen the case. And they informed me that the city attorney had informed them that it would cost too much money to get re-involved in this, that they were going to drop it completely and use their time and money for more important things that were coming up at this time. And so I decided I did not personally have the time and the money to continue it alone. I had other things to get on with my life. There were other things that I wanted to be involved in, and so I let go of it also. But you have heard that since then. I have continued as a private citizen to stay in tune with it, though. As from these uh, newspaper articles, uh, this is from March of 7, 1982, in which a, uh, Charlie Dodd is quoted as explaining to a group of citizens at a forum. This was brought up at a forum uh, at that time. And Charlie Dodd explains a little bit about the history and my involvement in it and why it was dropped. So the citizens are still interested in lower telephone rates. 
uh, recently, in October 25, 1984, Rockwall, the city of Rockwall, petitioned uh, the Public Utility Commission for exactly the same type of metro service that we were asking for, and our current city council jumped on the bandwagon, informed the Public Utility Commission that we were first in line to get this service. They sent our present city attorney down there to put a stay on the Rockwall decision until they reopened our case. And I'm glad to see that our present city council, Mayor, Mayor Larry Sample, Wednesday, April 3rd, 1985, passed a resolution to continue the efforts to get its extended area service. They have our attorney down there working with the Rockwall attorney. And as recently as Saturday, April 27th, right here, the Public Utility Commission is reopening our case re-examining our uh, request along with Rockwall and 50 other suburbs of Dallas asking for the same type of service. Thank you, Melody. Uh, we certainly appreciate your participating in uh, this project. I see you have also a uh, certificate of uh, appreciation from the city. The mayor at this time was Richard Turner and this certificate of appreciation was given to me on July the 4th in appreciation it says uh, the city council of the city of the colony acknowledges with appreciation the fine contribution of talent initiative and industry made by Mary Pine in the city's quest for metro phone service for the citizens of this community the city of the colony extends to Mary Hunt its humble expression of esteem for her serving city of the colony faithfully and well, and its best wishes for good health, success, and prosperity for many years to come. In witness thereof, this certificate is presented by direction of the city council of the city of the colony, Denton County, Texas, City Secretary Janice Carroll, Mayor Richard Turner. I am extremely proud of this. You should be, Mary. You have done very well in pressing for a decent telephone service in the colony. I give all thanks and honor, though, to God, my Creator, because it is through Him that I was able to do this. And whatever was brought about, whatever we in the colony get, comes from the Lord because it is the best for the colony. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Norm.